the unfortunate nature of everything we've just described is you create a fringe movement. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of doc on a box hormone practices that are, I believe, putting women at risk mm -hmm. and I believe are doing bad things to women in the name of doing good. And I don't believe that these are inherently bad individuals. I think they are, I think they're ill-informed. I think they're just not that bright. Um, and, and maybe some of them are just actually charlatans and they're seeing an enormous opportunity here. Um, as a general rule, I tell patients, be very, very suspicious of a doctor that is selling you hormones. Mm -hmm. Be incredibly suspicious of any physician who has their own compounding pharmacy within the practice and is giving you compounded formulations and also making money on it. Talk a little bit about the, I don't want to call it the dark side, but just kind of the fringe side of this world. So I would argue that people care about their pain points. People want to feel better. People will go to anyone who tells them, here's, you know, there's a whole supplement aisle at CVS that makes all these wildish claims that we're going to help you with everything. And the reality is, is I just got done saying your gynecologist and your internal medicine doctors are going to in that 10 minute visit, tell you that you don't need this, this is not going to help you. And so enter the fringe people, the snake oil salesmen, the people who are doing um, wildly inappropriate things. That doesn't mean the hormones themselves are bad. It just means we have a marketing problem here. If we're not doing it and helping people, people are, you know, they hear their friend did it, they hear their, their neighbor did it, and they said, I want what she's having, right? This is why we call ourselves the menopause. This is why we teach so loudly is because we're trying trying to bring it back into medicine and evidence-based medicine and say, you can actually do this quite reasonably. In fact, there are many FDA pr approved products that work, you know, much better, that are more regulated, that are totally safe. You know, here's what they are. They should be covered by your insurance, you know, and giving them that knowledge. Because the problem is, is when no one is, right, it's too quiet. No one is giving people answers. No one's even looking at the questions. So then the fringe people take over and are unfortunately doing very inappropriate things. You know what? We see this with men's health too, right? Yep. As a urologist, we see shot clinics and all these wild PRP clinics and, and, and testosterone pellet clinics and compounded pellets and all of these things because my colleagues, we are not doing enough to take care of men's sexual health. And so these clinics exist to prey on those patients who deeply want to connect and get their answers, right? Which is why my colleagues and I are even loud about it on, you know, for everybody. Yeah, the number of online testosterone clinics is mind boggling. And, you know, a lot of them are prescribing, I think, second tier drugs, right? And you know what I say? I say, you know, with these things is the people who need it are not being offered it and the people who don't need it are abusing it, yep. right? And that is true for hormones for everybody because we, they just uh, talked about this at the last menopause meeting. Less than 4% of women are on hormone therapy right now. Less than 4%. That's worse than 4% of, of women yeah, who would women theoretically who would, be yeah, required. Four, less than 4%. Wow. That's worse. Wow. That's worse that's than worse 10 than years I ago. Guessed. It's worse than 10 years ago. It is so bad out there. Huh. I need, so I, I did the same calculations you did when I was on my Uber on the way over. I said, how many women are over 40? It was something like 84 million, according to AI, right? And I said, okay, how, and there are about 3,000 people on the Menopause Society website. That doesn't mean everybody knows what they're doing or that they all do the same thing, but divide 84 million by 3,000, it's a big number. And we can't see patient panels of 27,000 people. Like that does not, the math doesn't math there. So we need people to step up and write the so who should be writing estrogen prescriptions who every doctor who sees a woman of that age every doctor who sees a woman of that age and so who actually does nobody i'm peter atia this podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers i believe this keeps my content honest making it a trusted resource for listeners like you as a premium member you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of ama episodes and all future ama episodes you'll get longevity focused premium articles packed with actionable insights You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. 
You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future. Thank you.